Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome back to another devlog. I've been talking about adding ship damage and sinking mechanics for quite a while now, but the time has finally come. In this video, I'll be making ships sink, so I'll actually have some visible progress to show by the end. If you enjoy these kinds of videos or have ideas and suggestions, let me know down below. I read and respond to all your comments and I love hearing what you guys have to say. It's currently just after 4 in the afternoon and I think it's about time for an update. This morning I managed to fix the NAN explosion that I was having at the end of the last devlog. Turns out I wasn't properly initializing the rotation part of the player's state, which the physics library wasn't too happy about. After I solved that, I realized my players could no longer move around. In fact, the physics seemed to have stopped working altogether. It took me several hours to figure out what was going wrong, but I finally noticed that I had added a start method to my transform class without implementing my iStartable interface, meaning the start method was never being called. Since that method contains code without which transforms don't update properly, everything was getting screwed up. The simplicity of the problem, combined with the amount of time I spent trying to sort it out, was super frustrating. Unfortunately, it's so often the littlest mistakes that cost you the most time, precisely because they're small and hard to notice. Once I implemented the interface, physics started working again. Mostly. I was pretty excited when I first tested it, because I thought I'd fixed all the issues with my rollback system, but that hope was quickly ripped apart when the physics bodies started twitching and flying up and down super fast. Obviously, I don't want this to happen, and it's pretty likely that it's due to another small lapse in my logic, so I have no idea how long it'll take to figure this one out. It's almost 11am now, and I'm about to get to work. Last night as I was going to bed, I had the thought that the crazy physics are being caused by the buoyancy code for players and ships, so I decided to take another look at what exactly is happening. Considering that the client's waves are currently out of sync with the servers, which is something else I need to fix, the player does seem to levitate only when he's submerged. When he's standing on dry land, it doesn't happen. Since I haven't added any of the buoyancy values to the player's state, I suspect that's what's causing the problems. It's 2.30 in the afternoon, and although my state system accounts for buoyancy now, the problem persists. Objects are still flying everywhere, and I really don't know why. On a much brighter note, we hit 50 subscribers a little earlier. Although in comparison it's not much, this is the first major milestone for me. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support here in the YouTube comments and over on my Discord server. It's really awesome to see this community growing. It's Thursday morning and I'm about to get to work on some client side stuff. I didn't make much progress since yesterday. Everything still breaks when I try to rewind server time and re-simulate to the present and I still have no idea why. I guess time travel is just something we shouldn't mess with. I've decided to do some work on the way the client handles state updates, partially in the hopes that it might help me track down the cause of this mess, but mostly just so I can get something done. The last few days have really been sapping my motivation, mainly because it feels like I've reached an impasse, so I need to see myself making some sort of progress. It's just after 2 in the afternoon now, and I haven't actually made any changes to the client yet. I was going to, but then I found myself drawn back to the server side problem. I guess I have a hard time doing something else while I'm facing such a major issue. Anyways, I actually managed to fix the problem. It was a pretty stupid mistake, but I decided to step through the re-simulation code again, this time paying special attention to the buoyancy states, since I knew those were causing the problem. When I realized that throughout all the previous ticks, the buoyancy states were the same, I immediately understood. I was storing a reference, not a copy. This is so unbelievably obvious to me now, I can't believe I spent several days trying to sort this out. Then again, I guess that's always the case when a small mistake causes issues of this scale. Once I changed the buoyancy state code from this to this, there were no more terrible physics problems. The only difference is that now I'm grabbing a separate list with the same values instead of a reference to the original list. However, for some reason I still can't move the player, so I have some more investigating to do. It's just after 5 on Friday evening, and I finally finished fixing up player movement. It took quite a bit longer than I had hoped, but there were several things I needed to change up in order to get it working properly. Big thanks goes to Norbo, the developer of Beppu Physics, for the great support on the forums. I definitely wouldn't have been able to get all the server rollback stuff up and running without his help. I'm so glad that it's finally all done, since I can now move on to sinking ships and other gameplay mechanics. There are of course still other things to do that relate to network architecture, but now that I'm able to rewind time without issues, stuff like client prediction can wait a little longer. This afternoon I got to work on making ships sinkable. The first order of business was to make cannonballs account for the velocity of the ship when they're fired. 
That wasn't too difficult to implement, but when I tried to test it, I realized I couldn't get on board the ship. Currently, I have it set up so that pressing G will teleport you onto your ship. Obviously, this is only to help me test things more easily, but it's currently not working. After some investigating, I found that the server was receiving the input, but when the server rewinds time to re-simulate other inputs, the player's ship ID gets set to zero. Without the ship ID, the player effectively doesn't belong to a ship and therefore can't be teleported to it. The problem is that when a player creates a new crew, it's basically an irreversible action. I could remove the team when rewinding to a time before it existed, but that seems pretty inefficient considering I'd end up recreating it once the tick with the creation input is re-simulated. However, the alternative would be to give the player a reference to the created team in the past, even though he doesn't belong to it yet, which sounds like a very messy solution that could easily lead to more complex problems. I'll have to think this through properly, so for now I'm going to take a look at putting visible holes in the ship's hull. I'm hoping I can accomplish this with a shader, but I'll need to do some research. Also, I just want to quickly mention that I uploaded part 2 of my c -sharp networking tutorial series on Saturday, so if you're interested in that, make sure to check it out. Last night I did some research to see if I could find any resources or tutorials to guide me in my attempt to cut holes into my ship's hull. Unfortunately, I didn't find much, and I'm really not sure if it's actually possible. As you can see here, I've managed to cut a cylinder shaped hole into the hull, but the problem is it prevents the other side from rendering as well. My use case is pretty specific, and considering the way rendering queues work, I don't think I can prevent only one side of the hull from rendering, at least not without splitting it into two objects. I would like to make ships syncable by the end of this week, so I'll leave the visuals for later. In order to shoot at other ships though, I need to be able to get on my ship and access the cannons, meaning the first step is to sort out the state issues which I mentioned yesterday. It's just after 3 o'clock now, and I've sorted out the respawning problem. I've decided to go with the approach of keeping one-time actions out of the state system. Only things like movement input, position, rotation and velocity which all occur regularly and are easy to reverse are stored by the server for a few ticks. Quite obviously, there's a few things I need to clean up, like cannons shooting more than one cannonball at a time. I've also noticed that sometimes the player doesn't move in the direction he's facing, but this appears to be occurring randomly, so I'm not sure what might be causing it. As you can see here, despite the fact that I'm pressing W to move forward, the player is moving backwards and pressing against the back of the ship. I forgot to mention this yesterday, but I got a comment from Anonym Anonym on the previous devlog. He suggested to disable the scriptable render pipeline batcher to fix my dots related shadow issues. My first thought was that it couldn't seriously be that simple, but after trying it, it turns out he was right. Disabling the batcher solved all the shadow problems. Although this hasn't changed my mind about switching to dots, especially since I can't imagine this is intentional behavior, at least I now know it wasn't an issue on my end, so thank you for the tip. It's just before 8 in the evening now, and I've finished rewriting the majority of how input is handled on the server. This took quite a bit longer than I intended, largely because I kept finding flaws with how I planned to set it up, so I spent a lot of time thinking before I actually wrote any code. I had to change the input handling to prevent multiple cannonballs from being fired each time I clicked the mouse, and I decided to take the opportunity to make the whole system more modular and reusable. Only one cannonball is fired at a time now, however, for some reason they produce errors occasionally, which I think are related to the server rewinding time, so that's something else to fix up at some point. It's early afternoon on Thursday, and I've just finished retagging most of my videos. My goal was to rank higher in search, so I did a bit of research on YouTube SEO, and it turns out I wasn't using my tags very effectively. I've changed that up now, so hopefully my videos will show up more often when people search for related keywords. However, this doesn't leave me with too much time to sink ships. I'd like to have the bulk of it done in this devlog, which means today is essentially the last day to get it working, since I'll have to put aside some time for editing tomorrow. I think this sort of deadline will really help me be more productive, but I'm going to get to work and only update you guys once I've made some decent progress, unless something particularly interesting happens. Okay, so it's 10 o'clock now, and after a lot of digging through the Beppu physics code on GitHub, as well as asking a few questions on the forums, I think I've got everything in place to allow me to execute code when certain collisions happen. 
Unfortunately, when I just tried to test it, as soon as I teleported to the ship, I started sinking through it. I suspect it has something to do with collision filtering, which, as I think about it, I'm pretty sure I completely forgot to set that up, so that's probably causing problems. I'm gonna go to bed now though, and aim for an earlier start tomorrow. I still think I can get at least a basic form of ship sinking in place, but I also need to make sure to give myself enough time to edit this video, so I guess we'll see. It's just after 11 on Friday morning, and as you can see, I no longer sink through the ship's collider. However, when I go to shoot the ship, I get this error message from Beppu, so clearly something is still wrong. I've posted another question on the forum, so hopefully I'll get a response soon, but for now I'll do my best to put the necessary code in place to sink the ship once it's actually hit. 1 o'clock now, and ships can finally sink. I'm still waiting for an answer regarding the physics problem, so cannonball collisions still don't do damage. Currently, I have it set up so that the ship sinks shortly after it's spawned, and I'd say it looks pretty decent. I might slow it down a little since it looks pretty fast at the moment, but overall I'm happy with it. I do really need to start editing this video now though, so I'm going to have to leave it here. Over the weekend I'll try to fix the collision problem, but I also need to record the next part of the networking series, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get anything else done. If you made it this far into the video, let me know down in the comments, because not many people watch all the way through. If you wouldn't mind also smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that'd be awesome, and come check out the Discord server, there's a link in the description. In the next devlog, I'll finish up the sinking mechanics, and then I think I'll work on adding a day-night cycle, so if you're interested in coming along for the journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you're always notified when I upload another video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.